Hello, today I'd like to talk about how to fall in love with your own voice. So many of us love to sing in groups, but we become emotional or insecure or just less satisfied when we sing alone. Now, I know that singing alone is certainly different than raising your voice with others, but wouldn't it be great to experience even just a little bit more joy while you're practicing, singing along with something, or busting out a tune while you're folding your laundry? I realize the bold statement of loving your voice might be a daunting thought for some of you or feel unachievable. I'm here to tell you, you can learn to love your voice. But first, I'd like to tell you that the phenomenon of not really liking your voice is common. It is totally normal. It is so common that it has a name. Voice confrontation. Voice confrontation is the phenomenon of a person not liking the sound of their own voice. It is generally caused by disappointment due to differences between what a person expects their voice to sound like to other people and what they actually hear in recordings. Remember that the sound we hear when we speak or sing is different from what others hear. When we're hearing ourselves live, we hear and feel vibrations that are routed internally, as well as vibrations that leave our mouths, bounce around the room, and then come back to our ears. Getting past the science, we need to take a moment to address the collective hurt that many of us have experienced directly or witnessed indirectly. I have so many adult voice students who come to me with stories about how when they were eight or six or 16, that they were told by someone that they couldn't sing or that they have a bad voice. Not only did many of you share this experience, but also have in common that the person that was giving that very mean feedback was someone that you trusted or admired. This kind of blow to the ego can leave people silent and not singing for years. Then we have the harsh critique of reality singing competition shows. Many of these shows have hosts, they make faces and they roll their eyes. The videos are edited to showcase or to mock performances that are less than amazing. And they make it seem like there are those who can and those who can't. And if you're in the can't column, Social media seems to think it's fair game to rip you apart publicly. The good news is that isn't real life, and all of us can fight against this culture of shaming to find beauty in our own voices and the voices of those around us. People have been singing for ages, and it's a fairly recent phenomenon that has decentered the communal aspect and the culture that singing is for everyone. Singing is also a skill that can be developed. Yes, some people start from a different place, but it's the same as something like riding a bike or learning handwriting. Some people take to it naturally and others have to work a bit harder. And how hard you work, how much dedicated time you spend on improving your craft will make a difference. Now, modern studio recordings use all kinds of pitch correction. Just a handful of decades ago, this was not the case. But now, now we're expert listeners with very high expectations. So the first thing I'd like to encourage you wherever you are, is to have a beginner's mindset. One of my favorite illustrations of this is thinking about a small child learning to walk. They fall down, they get back up. But you encourage them. You say, you can do it, that's it, try again. You would never say to a toddler, you are a terrible walker. You should just give up and never do it again. So why do we do that to ourselves as singers? Speaking of expectations, let's remember that every voice is unique. Your instrument is physiologically different than anyone else's. As with standard instruments, you might be more of a piccolo or a saxophone or a tuba. Don't expect to sound like another instrument. Be the best you you can be. And as we get older and our voices change, we need to know and remember that the timbre of our instruments might change as well. And that's okay. That's part of the beauty. Now, I have a challenge for you and I really want you to do this. I want you to record yourself singing something simple, something that's in the middle of your range in a nice, easy place. It might be a children's song or like an easy hymn. Try to pick something that doesn't have a famous voice associated with. I'm talking Mary had a little lamb, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Do that. Record yourself and then play it back. Find one thing, just one thing you like about your performance. Was it full of heart? Could you hear a smile in your sound? Did it sound authentic? Maybe there was a single word that had good character. Was there a lightness or a richness? Say it out loud. I liked the way I sang the word star. It had a sparkle to it. 
then build on this foundation. It is so important that we start looking for the beauty. Now, I'll tell you a quick story about myself. When I was studying music education in college, my major instrument was trumpet. I was not a singer. I sang, I, I didn't hate singing, I just wasn't a singer. Well, we had to take one semester of a class called Class Voice. We learned vocal basics, warm-ups, and some fairly simple art songs. Then, then we had to sing for each other. All of these, all of these instrumentalists, all of these non-singers. People kind of collectively freaked out. But we had a very kind and encouraging teacher, and it was a good group of students. When we sang for each other, we were only allowed to give each other positive feedback. When it was my turn, I sang. Kind of quietly, kind of awkwardly. My voice sounded young and probably a little bit thin. But I sang. And then I took a breath and I waited for my feedback. You know what someone said? She raised her hand. She looked right into my eyes. She smiled kind of adoringly. And she said, you sounded like an angel. How could this classmate who I barely knew interpret the very sound that I was hearing as kind of a small and thin and underdeveloped sound as something that was beautiful? That comment blew me away and it taught me a lot, not only about looking for the good in my own voice, but about how important just a little bit of encouragement can be. So what comes next? What comes next for you? Take that exercise I gave you earlier and do it again. Record yourself singing. Play it back, make some adjustments, but most importantly, play with your voice. Experiment, make weird sounds that go too far. Just like a young child would do while learning a new skill. Sometimes you don't want to or need to go so far into a critique. Just play, discover, experiment. Then when you're ready, record again, listen again, and state what you love about your voice or what you like, or at least can tolerate in a positive direction. That is absolutely an okay place to start. So sing and acknowledge the individual character of your own voice. You don't need to imitate other singers. You can emulate the good things you hear in others. Listen to singers you like. What do you like about their voices? Then be your own best coach. Learn to give yourself a voice lesson and a safe, practical, and positive self-critique. I even have a video dedicated to just that. Learn how to change things in your voice gently and safely. Work with a vocal coach or a teacher for fastest results. Right now, there are a lot of people teaching online. I'm one of them. Or when the time comes, make an appointment and do some work in person. I hope I've given you some good things to think about. Be brave. You have nothing to lose. I hope to hear from you about what is working for you. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Instrumentalists. People kind of collectively freaked out. You coming up? Every time I tell you, every time. And now I have cat hair on myself.